Hey Internet, Trace Dominguez here for Test 2 Plus. This is our video podcast show where we talk about one thing for a whole week. This week we are talking about humans. Feel free to pop in your headphones, put me on the background if that's easier for you. Where are humans going to be in 50 years? This is going to be a lot of questions. Are we moving to other places? Are humans going to change at all? These are huge, huge ideas and questions. A lot of science fiction is devoted to this, but let's think about it. Right? If we are living in space, for example, when the African human tribes moved into Europe and met the Neanderthals, we didn't have as much vitamin D coming from the sun as we used to. We had to adapt and learn to live in a completely different climate with mountains and cold weather. Living in space is even harsher than that. And a lot of humans probably died when we moved from Africa to Europe. So imagine moving into space. We've got lack of nutrition. We've got lack of psychological interest. We've definitely got lack of vitamin D because we're going to get farther away from the sun if we try to go anywhere. On top of that, we've got radiation and cosmic rays. And we're thinking generations of time to get from one place to another. Lots of people are going to die if we move to space, but slowly we're going to adapt. That's what humans do. Let's take that. What if we lived underwater? What if we decide to move down there? Still got that vitamin D problem. There's no sun down there. It's also dark and it's really cold. So people that maybe don't have as good a circulation might not survive as well. Whereas people who have great circulation, they might live on. This is of course talking about over thousands of years, not just, you know, a family who moved somewhere. There are some scientists who believe that if we move to a spacefaring or an underwater life, then things are darker, which maybe will get paler. Maybe our eyes will get larger. People with larger eyes might do better in those societies, you know, like like Gollum or something. In the end, again, a lot of people are going to die, but humans will adapt. That's what we do. There's no way that we can know exactly what would happen when we take Homo sapien sapien and put Homo sapien sapien into space or onto Mars or something, which actually sounds like kind of a fun, you know, television show. Homo sapien sapien in space. Until it happens, we're not going to know because it's either adapt or die. I'm going to get over saying that. Don't worry. More likely, what's going to happen in the future is less lots of adaptation via death over tens of thousands of years, but rather genetic modification. We're getting so good at looking at our genome and picking out the things that we want or don't want that if we go into a spacefaring nation or we move underwater or we do something drastically different, there will be a reason for us to alter humanity to do that, right? Thanks to gene modification, we could evolve in the next thousand years as fast as it would take a hundred thousand years for regular evolution. Of course, scientists say that if that's the case, it also might depend on fads. It might be cool to do something to your genes for this generation that isn't cool for the next generation. You know, kind of like how crazy names come and go. So for example, maybe night vision is cool this generation, and next generation crazy hair, and night vision is kind of blasé. But really, honestly, who knows? There's no way to know what's going to happen in 100,000 years, but these are based on the scientists and the science we have now, what people are predicting. A while back, an artist did a thought experiment of what we would look like in 100,000 years. And the thing that this artist came up with was based on scientific principles, but wasn't science. And, I mean, honestly, they look like those birthday cards that always creeped me out, where the animals have huge eyeballs and, like, super skinny faces and necks. That's what they think that humans might look like. Their foreheads will grow. Our eyes will get bigger because eyes are such an important part of modern communication, especially as visual communication becomes more and more and more important. On top of that, we'll look at technological advancements, like the way that our technology is becoming more close to us and not just in a physical sense or not just in a valued sense, but like literally physically touching our skin all the time. Maybe we'll just integrate it into ourselves. It's hard to say. But this all brings to question what can humans do in the future to make sure that humans can live on? Previously, humans were living in Africa, Europe, Asia, North America, you know, the land bridge to get you there. And those things were fine because there's plenty of space. There was food for everybody and people that couldn't eat would die. So food for everybody, meaning the ones who were living, hopefully. And now we've kind of modernized and process all of that stuff. So isn't overpopulation the biggest worry for humans going forward? This is a conversation that a lot of people have. 
So, can the Earth keep up with our growth? According to science and according to research done by Harvard University social biologist Edward O. Wilson, the Earth, give or take a billion, can hold 9 to 10 billion people. That's, that's a lot of people. I mean, we're almost at 7 now, but uh, 9 to 10, that's a lot more. Based on the amount of arable land, and if everyone was a vegetarian, 10 billion. Yeah, because it's easier to grow vegetarian stuff than it is to grow meat stuff. There's a lot of empty space on our planet. Currently, we have 35 people per square mile if we were to spread them over the entirety of the surface of our land. That's not very many. We can fit way more per square mile. So it's possible for the Earth to sustain 10 billion people with food. It's possible for us to fit lots more people onto our planet. And a lot of that is going to take our ingenuity, but where humans are going to be is a little more complicated than that. So what's going to happen to humans in the future? Experts say, shrug, we're going to get cooler. I know that much. But what do you think? You can tell us in the comments, are we going to go Gattaca, perfect society kind of craziness, or are we going mutant Professor X kind of craziness? And if you haven't watched all our videos from this week, here they are. Click on one of them now, and you can watch more about the history of humans. Thank you for watching Test Tube Plus. Please subscribe for more videos next week. We'll see you then.